Our final topic for this unit is organic reactions. Now, some of these you just need to be able to identify or recognize, while others you're going to need to be able to draw and explain to predict products. We'll start by looking at combustion. Combustion is a form of oxidation reaction. This is one that you're not going to need to be able to draw and necessarily predict the products. The products are always the same. One of the reactants is always the same. This is the kind of organic reaction you would have to be able to identify and answer questions about. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, combustion involves a hydrocarbon, usually an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. Not always, uh, but I'd say 99% of the time it fits into one of those homologous series. It can be any hydrocarbon. When it's burned in the presence of oxygen, you have combustion. And like I said, the products are always the same. So we look at the example of a chemical equation that we have below. And the first reactant we see is C3H8. Now the 3 and the 8, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen, uh, fits with the alkane formula CnH2n plus 2. <clears throat> One thing it's important to understand, it doesn't have to be an alkane. It usually is, but it can be any of the homologous series or really any hydrocarbon in general. That doesn't tell us we have combustion, though. Not necessarily. This tells us we have combustion. You combine that hydrocarbon with oxygen. Now it's, without a doubt, officially combustion. The hydrocarbon alone could be part of a substitution reaction, an addition reaction, any number of other types of organic chemical reactions, but the presence of oxygen with the hydrocarbon means that you're burning it. The products are always carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. So you'd, be able, you'd need to be able to see this chemical equation and identify it as combustion. You would also need to be able to answer multiple choice questions such as which of the following is always a reactant in a combustion reaction? The answer to that question would be oxygen. Uh, another example, which of the following could be a reactant in a combustion reaction? One valid choice, something like C3H8, any hydrocarbon. It doesn't have to be the same one. Which of the following is always a product of a combustion reaction? And that's these two. There's no such thing as combustion that doesn't involve the production of carbon dioxide and water. So that's the kind of thing you need to be able to do for combustion. You, sh you won't have to necessarily draw it or explain the mechanism. You have to be able to identify it and answer questions about it. And one quick, again, I have to make sure that you understand this. This doesn't necessarily need to be an alkane. I want you to cross that out. It just needs to be a hydrocarbon. It's usually an alkane, but I don't want to set you up. And the reason I say that is the next type of reaction is called a substitution reaction. In this case, it does have to involve a saturated alkene, alkane. It cannot be anything else. And this involves replacing one or more of the hydrogen atoms on one of those saturated alkanes with another atom or group. So a hydrogen, one or more hydrogens get replaced or substituted. So if we look at an example of a chemical equation <clears throat> that involves a substitution reaction, how do we identify the different parts? Well, again, I've chosen to use the same hydrocarbon, C3H8. That fits our CnH2n plus 2. That tells us we have a saturated alkane. Hopefully you guys are getting better at spotting that by now. It's something that really needs to be kind of routine. Combined with that, I do not see oxygen, so it's not combustion. A substitution reaction usually, almost always, involves, at least on the Regents exam, that's what I'm focusing on a little bit here, uh, one of the diatomic elements from the halogen family, because they're very aggressive. So we see a hydrocarbon, a saturated alkane hydrocarbon combined with chlorine gas, a halogen gas, and on the right side, to confirm that it's a substitution, we find we have a halogen that has replaced one of the hydrogens. I now only have seven hydrogens instead of eight, 
one of them has been substituted with a chlorine atom. And the, the hydrogen that was kicked off the uh, hydrocarbon goes to the only place it really can find a bond, and that's with the remaining chlorine. I've mobilized some of the atoms here, so we can hopefully make this a little clearer, give you a little visual. So here we have a chlorine-chlorine uh, nonpolar covalent bond. And as we know, chlorine's a bully. It's really electronegative. It doesn't want to have nonpolar bonds. If it can avoid it, it would like to really own the electrons more than its partner. So when you mix it with a hydrocarbon, chlorine is going to attack and say, I can beat carbon in a tug of war for electrons. And it's going to knock this hydrogen right off the molecule. I shouldn't have thrown it that far back here. Right, the chlorine will, will replace hydrogen on the molecule, form a polar covalent bond with carbon, where the chlorine really now gains more ownership of the electrons. This hydrogen here can't just float around uh, by itself. It's going to attach to the remaining chlorine, which now also gets a polar covalent bond of its own. All right, so that's how it works. The chlorines uh, would rather be participating in polar bonds, so they attack a couple atoms or a molecule where, that allows them to form polar covalent bonds. What we get is a halocarbon, as we said, <clears throat> where chlorine has replaced a hydrogen, and the inorganic product here, hydrochloric acid. Now, an addition reaction looks awful similar to substitution, and it's really all in uh, identifying the hydrocarbon here. So when you look at these two types of organic reactions, you'll notice, okay, up here at my substitution, I have two reactants. I've got one here, I've got one here. One's a hydrocarbon and one's a halogen. I look at my next. I've got a hydrocarbon here, I've got a halogen. So far, they look awful similar. On the product side, I see I have my halocarbon and I have an inorganic acid. I have two products. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, on the product side here with my addition reaction, I only have one product, and it's larger. In a substitution reaction, you'll notice if you count up the atoms in the hydrocarbon, you have 3 plus 8, which is 11. If you count up the atoms in the halocarbon, where a substitution occurred, the molecule didn't get any larger. I still have 3 plus 7, which is 10, plus 1, which is 11. So that makes sense, that in a substitution, the molecule didn't get any bigger. We just swapped out a hydrogen for a chlorine. Well, now we're doing an addition reaction. That means we're going to take these two things on the left, my hydrocarbon, which is an alkene, an unsaturated hydrocarbon, and we're going to combine it with the chlorine and make one larger organic product. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like because I've mobilized a couple of the atoms here. And what you end up with is you'll see that we have a double bond. Right? This is an alkene. It's called ethene. And what's going to happen is, again, we have our, our chlorines, sorry about that, which we said don't really necessarily want to be in nonpolar bonds. They'd rather win a tug of war for electrons. So now chlorine's going to go attack at the double bond. And this chlorine's going to go attack at the double bond. Now turn them both in. And what's going to happen is, since the chlorines are more aggressive with their electrons, or more aggressive for electrons, this bond here is going to disappear. That's not the bond I wanted to disappear. That one is the bond I wanted to disappear. And the chlorines are going to sort of demand that a bond forms between them and the carbons. And what you end up with is now a halocarbon that has two more atoms on it than the original. That's an addition. We formed a larger product. So if I work my way back to the beginning, I start out with a diatomic halogen, just like I had in the substitution. But I have an alkene or an alkyne, a hydrocarbon with a multiple bond. My product is larger, meaning it contains more atoms. Okay, on the left, my hydrocarbon had a total has a total of six atoms. On the right, my halocarbon has a total of eight. And those are the ways you can tell the difference between a substitution reaction and an addition reaction.